I cannot imagine my career without being publicly gay. No, not even for a second. And actually, to be honest, I think it made me cooler than I was, because I was different. <laughs> I think it became my USB. <laughs> All I had before that was just being posh. Hi, I'm Will Young, and this is the backstory of my public announcement of my sexuality after winning the talent show Pop Idol. My name is William Young and my chosen subject is William Young. I first realised I was gay and I write in the book about it, about uh, fancying Bobby Ewing in Dallas. And I thought it was quite an amusing, amusing thing. Yeah, certain people I'd have crushes on. And quite an interesting thing in a, to, to notice from, from a young age and also to then have an, a sense of being you know, different, because if I was watching Dallas, for example, you know, the relationships would be between a man and a woman. But yeah, no, Bobby Ewing just did it for me. Don't know what it was, faded denim. Probably. There was definitely a lack of gay role models, you know, in the 80s and in the 90s. For me, the only descriptions of what it was to be gay was HIV and AIDS. And the adverts that I would see, that were these awful sort of tombstones that would fall down you know so death really which is very bleak but kind of true um, and then there was Julian Clary and he was very ridiculed in fact people sort of forget about him he famously was banned from ITV for talking about something to do with uh, Norman Lamont as a matter of fact uh, I've just been fisting Norman Lamont <laughs> and he's, he's actually a very brave brave guy um, but yeah, he, he was sort of vilified. Later on, George Michael. George Michael was found looking for sex in public loos and he was set up, you know, so again, and then there was Freddie Mercury and he had died of AIDS. So, you know, really the, the role models, not that they were necessarily looking for that, more the people who were visible. They were very much made visible in a heteronormative, within a heteronormative narrative. So it wasn't inclusive. It wasn't healthy, you know, it was still seen as sort of seedy and very negative. You know, what would come into my subconscious, even conscious actually, was that being gay was wrong, you know, you were sexually deviant, um, you're going to die. So it affected me thinking, well, that's how I'm going to end up, you know, living my life. When I was growing up, you know, I didn't want to show anything that might be seen as a trait, you know, or trope of being gay, which was, which was difficult because I really wanted to sing. You know, I was in an all-boys school. The idea of being told you were gay was just, I mean, that was it. That was, you'd be, you know, a social leper. So with my singing, I was very aware of that because I had quite a high singing voice that I thought, well, that would be seen as very gay, basically. So I didn't come round to singing for a long time. And actually, I, I wouldn't have it any other way because I think I brought a real sense of innocence and naivety and joy to my singing when I ended up getting on TV um, because I just was so repressed. It was so wonderful to be doing it. Um, and I still really have that sense now of it being just such a joyous, liberating thing. I don't have any, you know, now I don't worry about it at all, but it's just so funny looking back thinking that that was such a, um, you know, was, I would never be singing because that would give the game away, you know. And then I ended up doing that as a career, which is so interesting. <laughs> Well, I always wanted to be a pop star, and I knew that if I was going to be a pop star, then a pop star's sexuality is, is a big deal. So I kind of knew the deal. You know, I was quite prepared for it. And when I went into the talent show Pop Idol... Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. William how you doing? Robert Young. Yes. Where are you from? You know, I just thought, well, if this... I mean, one, I just didn't know what was going to happen because it was just an unknown quantity at the time. 
And two, I just thought, well, I'll just be open about my sexuality, you know, um, because why would I not? Um, I couldn't think of anything worse than living a lie. I thought that would just be so tragic and sad and damaging. Um, so it was always a thing that I knew I would do. And, th and then as it got more popular, as the weeks went on and it started becoming quite a big show, well, a massive show, you know, people did sort of suggest that maybe I didn't mention it. And I, and I did say, well, if anyone was going to ask me, then I would, you know, I wouldn't outright deny it. Um, so the poor, poor publicity people, <laughs> they got it in the neck from me. This week was election week. On the last week of, the, of Pop Idol, we had these things called the battle buses. Genius idea, actually. It was myself and Gareth Gates, and they put our faces on individual buses, and we went around the country. <laughs> it was really fun. I just rang up all my friends and was like, quick, get on the bus. And I, there was a journalist that was going to ask, and it was very, they were very, very excited about it, all the PR people, tremendously excited. And I remember thinking, oh, God, what a storm in a teacup. Which it is, it's all bollocks, you know, but I suppose maybe it was important as well. Um, and there was this one woman, I think she was from the 3AM girls, they were called, that were a tabloid. tabloid. Anyway, one of them turned up, and she was about to ask, ask the question on this battle bus. And as, she, as it even left her lips, poor thing, she didn't want to ask the question. I was rushed out, like a sort of president under attack you know, under fire. Like, get him out, get him out! What the fuck's going on? And that was very amusing. I mean, the whole thing was very amusing. I, I had to see it as funny, because otherwise I think I would have just, would have just stopped and gone back to being a gardener. You know, tabloids were king and queen makers. You know, they really were. So you had to keep them on side. I don't think it, ever, it necessarily affected my sense of self in terms of who I knew I was because I knew it was all nonsense anyway. And I thought, if I buy into what people are saying about me, then i you know, rely on that for my self-esteem, then I'm just gonna go mad. So for some reason, I was quite grounded in that respect. What I was learning about the media was that it was all nonsense, it was all bullshit. And it was quite disenchanting and disillusioning, actually, to find out just how because I remember thinking, well, if it's all lies about celebrities, it's probably all lies about everything, you know? I think that was the thing that I found really upsetting, um, the reality of the situation. I mean, it was interesting because also at the time, not only, as I've spoken about, the media being very powerful, but there was no legal recourse to homophobia. You couldn't sue a paper for being homophobic. You could sue a paper for libel, you know, saying something that isn't true. But if a paper was homophobic, there was no recourse for that. You know, and also remember there was no, you know, gay couples didn't have legal rights then. There was no marriage, didn't have, uh, you couldn't be partnered and financially secure as a gay couple. Um, you know, prejudicial language and actions, you couldn't go to the police about that. No, no one would care. It was just normal. And that's what's so interesting is because, you know, it was normal. It was just part of the package. And I don't think, unless you're gay, I don't think you can really understand that. But it was just of the moment. It was just the way it was. Um, but the mental anguish that can create and spiritual anguish, you know, is, it can run really deep. The winner of Pop Idol 2002 is Will! I always knew that I would talk about being gay. It didn't change once I'd won. It was a decision to publicly talk about my sexuality. But the thing is, at the time, you know, it was literally like, because again, no social media, it was like any story you'd always get a warning that a story was going to come out in the papers. You know, you'd have to talk to your litigation lawyer, who incidentally I didn't realise I was paying for. And then we got wind that, it was the Sunday Mail, 
were going to write about me being gay, so I was going to go with the broadsheet, and I think I ended up going with one of the papers, I can't remember, News of the World, maybe. Um, and that was all very exciting, but quite scary, because it was sort of, I remember feeling quite exposed. And also, you know, not just exposed, but vulnerable and, you know, scared, you know, there were people attacked gay people. You know, they did. Homophobia was rife and there were not, people were not necessarily pleasant towards people who were visible with their sexuality, even in 2002. So that was scary and really boring, actually. You know, and I remember coming out of my flat with the rubbish and there, were the, there was like 30 press all on stepladders. It was like the scene, ironically, because I lived in Notting Hill, in Notting Hill, you know, banks, the photographers. And I was there holding the rubbish. One of the titles was Will Comes Out, and then in brackets, Holding Rubbish, which I think is really funny. But, you know, it was scary. And I had a panic attack in, in um, Tesco's Superstore, a frozen food aisle. Um, so I, I remember feeling a bit kind of nervous. If I remember the announcement piece, it was, I think I was saying in it that it's not a big deal. And, and part of me felt sad that I was saying that in the piece because I know that I was playing it down. My point was that it's not a big issue. That really was my point. And I knew that behind that, that actually was making a very powerful point because it would get a lot of people on side. You know, Mrs. Miggins in Stad Crowton made it up, you know, who really thinks that gay people are just terrifying and awful, you know, has voted for nice Will Young and Will Young's going, I'm gay uh, and it's just really not an issue. It, it, it did help. I think if I was going, talking about cocks and bums, you know, it just, I wouldn't have a career and the point that I wanted to make was, wouldn't have happened, which was that it's okay people, don't be scared of gay people, <laughs> we're nice, you know. And now I'm more a active and I'm older and more thoughts about it. But at, at the time I think that was important and I do think it did have, have an effect. Yeah, I, th I think it did have an effect. In hindsight, I wouldn't do anything differently. No, not at all. Very proud of, very proud of myself and the support of my team around me. Yeah, I think it's very cool, actually. And I got flowers from Elton John. I mean, <laughs> what a bonus. I don't know if I feel like I've influenced today's more open landscape, but I feel I've been a part of a wider journey and I'm not doing that to try and feign modesty, because I do think I'm brilliant. But, you know, there are a lot of steps and people before me, and there are a lot of people after me. I was just part of it. And, um, uh, and then just like being true to myself. Um, and that was, I think that showed people that, oh, public people, you know, people in the public might like people who are gay. You know, it's like, wow. Well, revelation um, and then I was fortunate um, and then just stubborn yeah but I will take I will take the word icon obviously Svengali figure guru I don't know I don't listen I don't make up these words you know people want to throw them at me throw them at me I'll take Svengali gay Svengali is that the next book yeah, I think it is. Thanks so much for watching. You can get my book To Be A Gay Man by clicking on the link below in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to Penguin for more videos like these.